Good morning and thank you for coming. My name is Dave Gouda and I'm an advocate with Illinois Public Interest Research Group. Illinois PERG is a statewide nonprofit, nonpartisan public advocacy organization. Joining me today are Attorney General Lisa Madigan, Dr. Elizabeth Powell of Lurie Children's Hospital, and Nancy Coles of Kids in Danger. I'd like to thank the, uh, the Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital for hosting us once again. We're here today to release Illinois PERG's 29th annual Toy Safety Report, Trouble in Toyland. Today's message is clear. We need to protect our littlest consumers from unsafe toys. Parents and caregivers should watch out for unsafe toys when shopping this holiday season. Over the last 29 years, our report has led to at least 150 recalls and other actions to get dangerous toys off of store shelves. When our researchers went out looking for potentially unsafe toys again this fall, we found dangerous products that could harm or poison a child. We found these toys everywhere, at dollar stores, online, and at big chain stores like Walmart and Toys R Us. Progress has been made. In 2008, policymakers responded to an unprecedented wave of toy recalls by passing a law to revamp the Consumer Product Safety Commission, empowering it to better protect America's kids from unsafe toys. In addition to expanding the tiny CPSC's budget and staff, the new law gave the commission more tools to speed recalls of dangerous toys, including a publicly accessible database of potential hazards called www.saferproducts.gov, which went live in 2011. It banned toxic metals and phthalates from many types of toys and children's products and required mandatory testing of toys and other products by manufacturers. But there are still products out there that fail to meet these important safeguards, and some standards need to be even stronger to fully protect our children. I want to demonstrate four hazards that Illinois Perg researchers found in stores or online in the past few months. Toxic hazards in toys, choking hazards, magnetic toys, and excessively noisy toys. Some of the most dangerous hazards posed by toys are invisible. That's because some of them contain toxic substances like the metals lead and chromium and chemicals called phthalates. First, we're all familiar with the dangers posed by lead. Lead has been banned in paint since 1977 and in gasoline for nearly as long. Lead is a powerful neurotoxin that causes chronic problems. It lowers IQ and causes behavioral problems. The new toy safety law imposed tough safety limits for lead and other metals in paint and lead in children's products. Illinois Perg researchers sent toys purchased at national retailers to a CPSC accredited laboratory to investigate if they contained the toxic heavy metal lead. At Dollar Tree, we found these toy sheriff badges that exceeded the allowable standard of 90 parts per million of lead. We also found a toy tambourine at Dollar Tree that contained more than nine times the allowable limit of chromium. It contains 580 parts per million of chromium versus the standard limit of 60 parts per million. Toxic chemicals called phthalates also pose potential hazards. Manufacturers use these chemicals to soften plastic, but they're connected to adverse reproductive and developmental health effects. Once again, it's children who are most vulnerable to these health effects. The 2008 product safety law banned children's products containing more than 1,000 parts per million of any six types of phthalates. We found these Hello Kitty toy hair clips from Joanne Fabrics, which had five times the limit of the phthalate DEHP. Now, I'd like to turn to choking hazards, which are the leading cause of all recalls. We all know that toddlers put everything in their mouths. Between 2005 and 2012, at least 60 children have choked to death on balls, balloons, toys, or parts of toys. In the past year, the commission has recalled more than 86,500 toys and other children's products from store shelves because of choking hazards. Toys are banned for children under three years old if they fit into this small parts choke test tube. 
The law, in place since 1994, also requires a prominent warning label for toys for kids between ages six and three, sorry, it all, the law in place since 1994 also requires a prominent warning label for toys for kids between three and six if they contain small parts. We found several toys for older kids with unreadable, obscure, or missing warning labels. We found these party favors at Dollar Tree which do not have any hazard warning label for a choking hazard. This is a label violation because the toy could appeal to a child aged three to five. It has small pieces that fit easily into the choke test tube. As you can see, this toy has small pieces that easily fit inside the choke test tube. We tell parents and caregivers, it's more reliable to use a test that's larger than the cho choke tube, and it's something that everyone has at your house, a toilet paper roll. If a toy fits in this toilet paper roll, it's not suitable for children under three years old. Now, I'd like to talk about magnetic toys. First, we want to commend the Consumer Product Safety Commission for its September announcement of a ban on the sale of sets of small, powerful magnets. Magnetic toys, including the so-called adult desk toys, such as buckyball and zen magnets included in the ban, still pose dangers to children. These magnetic toys are made with extremely strong magnets and can cause severe internal damage if more than one is swallowed. CPSC staff estimate that 2,900 ingestions of magnets from magnet sets were treated in emergency departments between 2009 and 2013. In addition, the commission has one report of a death involving magnet sets. Unfortunately, we found that these products are still available online, even though the CPSC has taken aggressive enforcement and legal action. We also continue to find these ellipsoidal toy magnets that are not illegal because they are just barely larger than the small part cylinder. These are Sizzler's Toys magnets that we found at Toys R Us. It's especially dangerous since it's shaped so much like a throat. The CPSC has reported stomach injuries associated with similar magnets when swallowed. Finally, I'd like to mention the hazards of loud toys on children. Research has shown that one in seven children between the ages of six and 17 have signs of hearing loss. This may be in part due to many children using toys and other children's products, such as music players, that emit loud sounds. Since 2009, the CPSC has enforced standards limiting the volume of noise-making toys. We found examples of numerous toys on store shelves that are extremely loud. Now I'll be demonstrating a toy. This is the LeapFrog Chat and Count smartphone that we found at Walmart. Listen to this. This toy is way too loud. It's meant to be held close to the ear, and so it's, uh, it's especially dangerous. This toy is marketed... <laughs> this toy is marketed as a phone, so it's meant to be held close to the ear. Loud toys like this one don't appear to violate current CPSC noise rules after testing, but we agree with hearing protection groups that the rules need to be strengthened. For example, the current test involves a measurement at a distance longer than a child's arm, but as you can see, toys such as phones are meant to be used close to the ear. In conclusion, because of its new tools, the CPSC has made progress in protecting America's children. We hope that it will continue to vigorously use those tools and that Congress will give it the funding necessary to fulfill its responsibilities. But there are many more hazards in children's toys that we still need to address. The Commission should revise its small part standard to better protect children from choking hazards. We praise the CPSC for its tough new magnet safety rule. We urge it to continue to investigate dangers from other phthalates and from other heavy metals such as cadmium. Policymakers should continue to overhaul U.S. toxics policy because current laws fail to adequately regulate thousands of chemicals. 
Parents should avoid shopping at stores that have not adopted a publicly available corporate policy on toxics in their products, such as Walgreens. Without such a policy, Walgreens does not play an active role in ensuring the safety of the products it sells. Instead, Walgreens leaves it up to manufacturers and suppliers to ensure product safety. For parents and consumers about to embark on their holiday shopping, we offer the following advice. You can go to toysafetytips.org to see our list of unsafe toys and for tips on how to shop safely this holiday season. Remember that Illinois Perg's report includes only examples of hazardous toys. Other hazards could be on store shelves. Always examine toys carefully for potential hazards before you make a purchase. We, we also urge parents to watch for hazards when shopping for toys on the web. Our report includes unsafe toys found online. Consumers should also report any unsafe toys or toy-related injuries to the Consumer Product Safety Commission at www.saferproducts.gov. Now, please welcome Illinois Attorney General Lisa Madigan, who's been a champion for consumer protection and toy safety. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave, and good morning to everybody. Uh, it is really an important opportunity that we take every year during the holiday shopping season to alert not just parents, but anybody who is out there buying toys for the children that they love about how they can make sure that those toys are going to be appropriate, how they're going to be safe, and so how everyone's going to have a safe and healthy holiday season. Um, as Dave talked about, uh, Illinois Perg, for many, many years, nearly 30 years now, has put together just an incredible report, their Trouble in Toyland report, that goes through really all of the things that parents and others need to think about when they're purchasing toys for their children. You know, we're all aware of some of the obvious dangers that are out there. Uh, we know about small parts, but do we really pay enough attention when we're purchasing toys uh, to make sure that we are not bringing into our home something that is potentially dangerous. I know as a parent, I have gone to the store and you see something that's really, really cute and you want to buy it, uh, but when you actually pick up the package, you look and it says, oh, you shouldn't be purchasing this for somebody under the age of three, and when you have somebody like that in your home, you really need to put the very cute toy back on the shelf and walk away and find another really cute toy to purchase. So make sure that you are obviously paying attention to those known dangers and recognize as Dave talked about, all of the unknown dangers that really are out there. And so the lead and the other chemicals that you cannot readily test for, uh, you need to think about when you're looking at certain toys. And you actually, what we end up doing in the store a lot is, you know, you pull out your smartphone and you do a search to see, are there phthalates in this product that you're about to purchase? Because there has been some testing done on many products by PERG and other organizations that will alert you to those potential dangers. In addition, you need to think about the choking hazards. You need to be aware of button batteries, which we've seen uh, increased use in toys, but also increased dangers for children if they happen to swallow those. Um, and so I would say this, use common sense when you're out there looking at toys, as well as use the resources that are available. And so make sure that you have signed up at uh, the Consumer Product Safety Commission's recalls.gov website, so that throughout the year you are constantly getting notices about recalls of dangerous children's products that include not just toys, but also include dangerous products for children such as cribs, strollers, high chairs, beds, as well as clothing that potentially is uh, dangerous for them. Every single year, we also put together out of the Attorney General's office a safe shopping guide. This contains all of the items that the CPSC has recalled this year that are dangerous items for children. There are over 100 different items in here. I'm happy to say that this year we're seeing a decrease in the number of toys that are recalled, but again, there are still over 100 different items that are intended for use by children that have been recalled by the Consumer Products Safety Commission. And as you just heard, there are many other items that are still on store shelves that are dangerous. So use your resources, use common sense to make sure that the items that you are purchasing are going to be safe. And be extra careful when you are shopping online, particularly secondhand items. We see that not very many of the items that have been recalled are ever returned. And so a lot of those, when we get online, we see them for sale uh, secondhand. So be very, very careful. 
Finally, I want to say one more thing, and that is about how you as a parent, you as an adult, can better protect yourself this year. Because while earlier on, back in 2007, 2008, we really had you know years of the recall, I would say this year has been the year of the data breach. And so when you're out there using your credit card, using your debit card, every single time you use that card, you are potentially opening yourself up to being a victim of identity theft. So please put transaction alerts on your card monitor your accounts by looking at your bank statements and looking at your credit card statements sign up to get free copies of your credit report because we don't want anybody to end up in a financially more difficult circumstances than they already will by spending a lot of money on holiday shopping with that let me say an enormous thank you to Dave for the wonderful work that PERG does year in and year out to keep our children safe and to really go through from A to Z what people need to know about toy safety. Let me also say a huge thank you to Nancy and Kids in Danger. Uh, they are on the front lines every single day of the year, keeping our children safe. And a special thank you to Lurie's Children's Hospital for always allowing us to come and to do this press conference. And a special thanks uh, to uh, Dr. Elizabeth Powell, who is with us all the time, and as I said, is the reason that my kids don't have Razor scooters or those little blow-up balloons in our house, because I have learned over the years uh, just the incredible dangers that uh, those items potentially pose for them. So thank you, and I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday season. With that, Dave's going to introduce somebody else. Thank you, Attorney General Madigan. I'd now like to introduce Dr. Elizabeth Powell, uh, emergency room physician at Lurie Children's Hospital. I just realized as I, as I came up here that I have a, a, something to use it for um, illustration on the floor, so I'm gonna grab it. This was what Dave had, um, had talked about earlier when he was talking about choking. I'm actually going to talk today about three things that we encounter in the emergency department. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about choking, we're gonna talk a little bit about magnets, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the injuries related to wheeled toys. Um, I can't say enough about choking. It's, the, the, the statistics are not so ominous because most choking episodes are near misses, which is good um, because we would prefer a child to be attracted to something like this, small, it's round. It would even be more dangerous if it were shaped like a ball, like a sphere, but this is, this is sufficient. And um, it gets to the back of their throat. We think about our anatomy, or review our anatomy. It's got one of two ways to go. It can either go down the esophagus, that's a good thing. Um, they choke, they sputter, it goes down the correct tube and everything is problem solved. Or it can block their airway. They turn blue, they choke, parents start interventions, and then they may or may not be successful. So it's critically important to prevent exposure to small parts because those, those really have a terrible potential for being um, fatal. In addition, despite the fact that things are labeled, I think there's a couple reasons why people um, end up having small parts around their house somewhat inadvertently. For example, this chat and count says 18 plus months, okay? That's not, that's not on there to, to t tell us about choking because this doesn't have anything you're gonna choke on. And that's the choking labels for older, younger than three years. Right? This is a label for um, suggestions for cognitive development. And I think a lot of people get the labeling confused because 18 plus months suggests that if your child is a precocious 14 month old, you might want to buy this. And you might think that that other toy that's got small parts, if they're a precocious two year old, then why shouldn't they use the toy that's for labeled for children three and older, or older than three, because their child's very bright. So I think it's really important that the parents be careful to know what these labels and how they're different. And it's not intuitively obvious. So the small parts labels are not about cognitive development at all. They're all about safety and being able to avoid small parts. I think the other challenge for parents is a shared toy box. You've got two children, you've got one who's five and one who's three, and um, you end up getting small parts mixed with big parts. and um, that potentially poses problems. So I think it's really important for parents to just know what's around their house and know what they have that might potentially create choking issues. Um, the second thing I'm gonna talk about are the magnets. And we talked about them a little bit earlier. 
These are some larger ones. I'm not sure that these would be all that enticing to eat, but I don't know. The ones that we tend to see in the emergency department are the small ones. One is not a problem. Two is not a problem if they're stuck together and don't separate. The challenge is that if you've got a bunch of magnets or you've got more than two that are separated in the intestinal tract, it's not a big deal in the stomach, but as they rotate through the intestines, if you get magnet one here and magnet two over here and they come together, they can cause a, a, an obstruction, which can make a child very sick. One might ask, well, that shouldn't be that hard to figure out, right? I mean, they, the mom comes in and says they swallowed magnets. Well, it's not always so straightforward because not always do the parents realize that from this huge set of magnets, two were gone. Um, and I think the second issue is that they're really the only way to pick this child out from the bazillions of kids this time of the year who are in the emergency room with vomiting is to do an x-ray. And so it's very easy as a care provider to not identify the one child and many who might have potentially had this exposure. So it's critically important to know if you have magnets in your house and to really keep them out of the reach of small children who are interested in eating them. Um, the third thing I'm going to talk about are the small wheel toys. And um, Lisa referred to my, my concerns about scooters. And um, I think I put other categories. We don't think about these things as toys, but I think it's really important that we um, be aware of the risk associated with scooters and skateboards and um, bicycles, too. I mean, I think I don't want to demonize any of these activities because I think it's really important for kids to be active. On the other hand, I think it's really also essential for parents to understand that protective gear is important and as much as you can to have your children um, participate in these activities separate from traffic simply because you can have serious injuries from falls but you generally have more serious injuries if this is happening in a traffic area. So um, I will conclude with that. I wish you all a happy and healthy holiday season and thanks again for trying to keep um, our children safe. Thank you, Dr. Powell. I'd now like to introduce Nancy Coles, Executive Director of Kids in Danger. Thank you, Dave, and, and thanks to uh, Illinois PERG for this uh, excellent report this year. Um, this information in this report really um, allows parents to keep their children safe. They can see what hazards they were unaware of and also learn more about hazards they themselves can check for, such as choking hazards. We congratulate PERG on doing this report for 29 years, giving parents this important information. We see the continuing hazards of lead, heavy metals, choking, and hearing damage, and by that we know that more still needs to be done. But the report also shows that we've made progress. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is doing a better job at stopping dangerous toys at our ports and making sure that every toy that reaches the store shelves has passed a mandatory safety standard for toys. And that simply was not true um, even five years ago. So we are thrilled to see that, that increase. Just last month, the new CPSC chairman, Elliot Kay, spoke on ABC's 2020 and reiterated his strong commitment to keep working on this issue and to make sure that uh, unsafe toys do, are not sold in stores. Parents and others can help toys uh, become safer by reporting problems with toys to saferproducts.gov that Dave mentioned. Um, that is a public database for the first time. Injury data is not hidden away in secret, but you can make that report there and other parents can see it. They get enough reports and hopefully they can take action on those toys such as these um, that are still found on store shelves. If you're out shopping, you can use, visit kidsindanger.org on your smartphone. We have a search field there. You can check and see if any of the products that you're looking for, the crib that you want to use when you're visiting your sister, to see if they've been recalled or have safety problems. Again, we want to thank uh, PERG, Illinois Attorney General Lisa Madigan for her leadership on safety issues, and the wonderful doctors and staff here at Lori's Children that really makes Chicago um, such an important place for keeping children safe. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, just a reminder, you can find our report, Trouble in Toyland, on our website at illinoisperg.org. You can also check for toy safety tips at toysafetytips.org. Uh, now I'd like to open it up for any uh, questions uh, for any of our speakers. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think parents are more aware of it just from bringing up more attention to the issue and also um, organizations like Kids in Danger and even the Attorney General for bringing awareness to this issue and you know, going after some of the, the toy manufacturers that have been faulty um, in the past and have uh, led to, unfortunately, in the extreme cases, deaths uh, in children. So yeah, I think parents have um, taken, you know, they're more aware of uh, this issue. Nancy, do you have any? Well, I think people are more aware of the issue, and I really want to give a lot of credit to all of you who are sitting and standing here because you have been, you know, phenomenal in giving coverage to the dangerous toys. The dangers oftentimes change, and so they remain hidden dangers. I think if you would say to a parent, what's the biggest problem, they would probably be able to very quickly identify, well, small parts, they'd be able to quickly say lead, but it's not always easy. I mean, you as an individual, it's highly unlikely you're gonna go out and get a lead testing kit and test all the toys you purchase. You're certainly probably not gonna be able to ever determine on your own if there are phthalates or other types of chemicals that are toxins and dangerous for kids in those products. In addition, there are a lot of new things. Um, when I was coming up, there weren't really wild noisy toys. These toys are very noisy, as pointed out. Uh, the powerful magnets, the button batteries. So there are a lot of new dangers. So while parents are aware, I think they're also a little overwhelmed, which is one of the reasons that we still come together and try to provide people with resources and common sense tips about how they can better protect themselves and their children. And so, yes, you know, parents are doing better, but there seems to be a lot more that they need to do and be aware of to keep their kids safe. So we continue to do this and rely on you to get the word out. I have one more thing to add, if you don't mind. <laughs> this question was about whether or not this is helping. Um, we don't have the best data, but anecdotal evidence would suggest that we're seeing, we overall as a nation, we're seeing fewer children who are choking on parts of balloons. There used to be a lot more case reports in the um, 80s and 70s and 80s, and we're just not seeing as many of those. Now, it may be that they're not reported, we're not certain, but my suspicion is that actually there's been a big success there. I think there's so much year-to-year -year variation on the small parts that it's really hard to know if you're making a difference. In addition, you're not counting all the near misses. So I think that's another challenge. Yeah, you can go to you can go to toy safety toysafetytips.org, recalls.gov, and also saferproducts.gov. Do you have any more websites? No, I, I would say those. You can also, as I mentioned, at Kids in Danger, we have a recall engine that will look for recalls. Um, but some of these um, hazards, as you know, all these store all these products are not recalled, and yet there's still hazards in them. So knowing kind of what you're looking for to avoid small parts. Um, if you, if you have a shared toy box, as someone mentioned, to, to try and figure out ways to keep those separate, um, and then avoid anything with a small magnet, I would just say. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, these are just examples of toys that could be dangerous. Um, so take this shopping cart, uh, for instance. There's eggs, there's lemons in here, but this could be any shopping cart that has uh, food in it. You know, so this is one example of a toy. And even just all these uh, toys, um, like the noise, these smartphones. Now there's smartphones everywhere. And now, last year there was called, they were called um, just a normal cell phone, now it's a smartphone. Um, but yeah, so there's noisy toys everywhere. These are just some examples. So parents just need to be vigilant when they're shopping for toys, just to check, keep in your mind toilet paper roll. If it fits into a toilet paper roll, it's probably, it might be a choking hazard for a child under the age of three. And if it's really loud, if it's too annoying for you when you're shopping for toys, then it's probably not suitable for a child, especially if they're gonna use it right by their hand. Any other questions? How many what? How many toys are being recalled? Oh, I'm not. Sure. This year, you might Do actually know the numbers. It's many fewer. Yeah, I, I can talk a little bit about the recalls. There is a, there because of the action that CPSC is taking to actually stop products at the port. Um, you know that are coming in in mass numbers. Um, 
we are seeing fewer toy recalls, but you know, uh, Perg was able to buy these just by going to the stores, looking for things that look like maybe they contain either phthalates because they were soft plastic or lead because they were a type of metal or plastic that looked like it might have that. Um, we have to believe that this is there. If, the, if they found these just by looking, there have to be other toys out there that they did not find simply because they can't test every toy on every store shelves. And the, at the very basic level, parents need to be sure um, that anything they buy in a store it, it meets our standards and is safe. We're getting there. I, clearly, we're not quite there if we're still finding things that, that violate that. And there's no way really to know how many more are out there. And with some of the hazards like lead, we may never know. It's not something that uh, at these levels where your child is going to be instantly severely impacted by the lead that you would go and get a lead test and know that that had happened. This, but every exposure to lead is um, cumulative and can have an impact that you may never even be aware of. So let me say this. So our guide has all of the items that have been recalled that are either toys or intended for children. This year it appears there are about 14 items that you could classify as a toy out of over 100 items that have been recalled. Now some years that number has been much, much higher. But again, there are probably more than 13 toys sitting right in front of me that still pose a danger. And so that's why it's not enough simply to be aware of what items have been recalled, you also have to use your common sense and you know, be a little suspicious when you're out there looking at toys, making sure that, you know, if it's too loud and annoying to you, don't buy it for your child. If it has little parts and your kid is five years old and still sticking stuff in their mouth, well, then even if it says not intended you know, for kids under three, don't buy it. Or if you have a child who's two, don't buy the toy that's not in, you know, intended for a child younger than uh, or older than three. So. You really have to make yourself aware as a parent, and you cannot simply rely on what's been recalled if you're going to be able to keep them safe. Were there any other questions? All right. Thank you all for coming, and uh, thanks again to Lurie Children's Hospital for hosting us today.